My original map, Sandstone, was made on version 125. 125. Here it is. With thanks to Joe Hills, who 10 plus years ago, I sent him my file, and he played the map. You can watch him play through it, and it's terrible. Now, by today's standards, no, by that day's standards, yes. Was it terrible? I don't know. But the balance, horrible. The mob spam, horrible. So many things wrong. <laughs> and every, all that being said, it was probably fine. Because I think it's what people were used to. This is the map I sent <laughs> to Joe Hills. Oh, he was so kind. And he played through it. And, and he kept the file somewhere in his email. Probably not on purpose. I'm not saying, but I didn't keep the file. And I've been working on updating my newest sandstone. My newest sandstone version is my work on this map. Not technically this map. You'll see what I mean shortly. Here's the original rule board. This was crafted to be much like Vex, who is affectionately known as Vetches who has loved and adored by some, despised and <laughs> insert whatever by others. Um, and we're not going to have hero worship here. Uh, but he created the CTM genre, complete the monument, and he made his own spin on it purposefully so that others could make their own spin on it without having to directly kind of put it in the same category as his. And many people have. And I started mini CTM back when I spelled my nickname of BRAN with one N. And I apparently put a dash. And uh, somewhere in here there is a spelling mistake, which I'm just probably going to be there forever. Well, I, yes, it was. I'm not seeing it now, but you've probably already found it if you care. If not, it doesn't matter. Uh, but rule XX, burn in the lava and die. <laughs> this was... This was when creative mode looks like this. This was when there were no potions. This was when... Minecraft was only just recently released. But hey, we have four different types of wood. That's pretty cool. This was back when there was one boat and one sign and one wooden door. <laughs> the technology of having wooden items made out of the different types of wood. Well, that was just a future innovation. Uh, so this is long ago. This is when you could spam click your sword... And I think there was still, was there a hunger bar? There was a hunger bar, but there's just a lot of innovations that weren't in existence, or at least that I did not have uh, access to. Um, even in creative mode, kind of, oh, the movement is slower. You don't, you do have a sprint, but only if you double tap the forward key, not by holding... There, there wasn't an alternate key that you could hold down to go directly into a sprint. Anyway, neither here nor there, but I want you to understand how old this map is. It's crazy. This was the starting area. I loved the idea of starting in a cave. Now, eventually, with the way spawning worked, or maybe it was just a better practice in case someone played your map in multiplayer. You want exposed air above where you're going to start, so this thing is not 
quite the trend it used to be. Um, what else? Is there anything of significance that I can kind of think of? We're going to jump around into the different versions of this map because I think that will be fun. That's the whole point of this video. In the map, I hid nine gold ingots, and you would craft the challenge block, which was just a gold block, and you'd find the three monument wolves. And there are only nine block, nine gold ingots, and if you lose any of them, you can't do it. That's uh, not the best gameplay uh, choice, as we'll probably talk about a little bit. Uh, I gave each area a name, beginner, beginner's reprise. Okay, action starter set. This chest stays very similar in all versions. Most of the chests do, and I think that's because in the next major update to this map, I replicated as much as I could in the spirit of, and then in the next version, it was really mostly a conversion to bedrock and an update to the items to make sure they worked and fit, as well as rebalancing and my better understanding of making something balanced and fun implemented. Uh, I didn't do any real custom. Gosh, I'd even customize this name, even though I enchanted it with enchantments that you can't normally do. I'm pretty sure I must have made this whole map with MC Edit. I think that would have to be the case. And Infinity 5, Damaged, Leather Cap, Zombie in My Ear, um, Action Starter Set. Whoa, and very sensitive mouse. So we're going to go to fly, and we'll just head out of this first area. It's mostly just a neandering path and lots of lava to sort of keep it safe. Skeleton right off the bat, because this is just 100% natural spawns. A chest, the very exit before the next area it's dangerous to go alone and just some basic swords because you're gonna die you're gonna die a lot and you're gonna need to be able to replenish your swords since at this early stage and and later stages of this map i believe in material restriction resource restriction i think that's an interesting aspect of ctm maps um, it, it takes it away from the normal Minecraft where you just, you know what to do. You know, you need to go get wood. You need to make your basic tools and you have access to everything right away. So right away, you're out of the starting area. You don't have a pick. You only have the swords I gave you. You're into the petrified woods. Woods is forest and... I don't know. This doesn't look like a tree to me. It was supposed to look like a tree. <laughs> Except the wood's been replaced with bedrock. The leaves have been replaced with obsidian. I thought back then the the obsidian leaves kind of looked... I mean, the obsidian blocks kind of look like leaves a little bit. Um, This was back before... Was this back before I did any kind of texture replacement? Well, yes, yes it was. That was until the next... Not to say it might have not been possible, but it probably would have had to been a separate file that you injected into the jar. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked very well, I don't think. Um, some of my facts here might be wrong, because there's been so many versions, and I don't know exactly what was possible in each one. But Lots of spider webs, lots of spiders, um, Soul sand instead of dirt. Just all the basic stuff replaced with things that are not what you'd expect to see. I believe, I think, these were actual trees and then I replaced them with MC Edit. Yeah, you could do block replacement very easily with MC Edit. So I probably 
placed a bunch of normal trees. And I don't know how I made sure to get it full, but I did it somehow. Jumping all the way to version 181. This would have been 2014, around about, as I looked up. <laughs> I don't remember any of these dates. Uh, clearly not the correct date, <laughs> 22. If we load in, we load into the beginning. Uh, my arm is purple. It's not my skin. That's okay. <laughs> I think this is my daughter's skin. I'm not sure why it loaded. It doesn't matter. Um, so we are in sandstone. And one of the major things that you'll notice is it's all the same color. And for some reason at the time, I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> we start with open sky. If you come over and look off the edge, you just see lava. If you come down to the lava, you'll see that it's not all source blocks. And this was something I had done long ago, just to make sure that it didn't look too boring. Look underneath, and we are, I think, at the bottom of the world. Won't be so in the next version, because <laughs> they've expanded that. We have Spectator. And the music stops. And... <laughs> I only want to dive into spectator mode to show you that underneath, everywhere, we have uh, what we call honeypots. Because I have no natural caves in this world, everything was placed on a, a flat area or a... Yeah, it must have been a flat area that I eventually cleared out of everything else. I need a place for enemies to spawn, so you're not getting spammed at the top. I think originally I set the day to start at sunrise so that you'd have some lighting clues. It would be dark. It'd be light over here. It'd be a little bit light down there. Here's the action starter set. Here are tip signs. I don't know if this is the introduction to tip signs. I might have them in the first version. We'll have to look. But it's a narrator of sorts. Don't take it all. You might die. Mostly, I wanted a way to, after watching people play through the map and maybe not do as, as well as I would have liked, I could give them feedback or tips or help. Um, but eventually, <laughs> eventually it's going to become something a little more interesting. So I just started placing them wherever I thought it might be good to give the player a hint. Pretty simple. Nothing to see over here. Don't look down. And you see a chest and you look in the chest and you have the challenge block fragment. Instead of gold blocks, there are nine challenge block fragments. It's just a retextured emerald in this version of the map. And they're all in places where you can see them as long as you look in the right direction. They're not too hidden, but there are only nine of them, and you can't lose them. Again, not something I think is the best idea, but it's, it's what it was. I didn't think about it. <laughs> too deeply. And then here we have the action starter set. This is the introduction of giving certain items green names with fun enchantments and lore text. Hey, who broke my bow? Didn't stay long enough to find out. Kind of give certain items a personality. Why is there an aqua cap? Why does it have Respiration 10? Prolonged use may lead to the development of gills. Why is there a hat in Minecraft that could make it so you have gills? What does that mean? I don't know. Holy-ish hatchet. How do you get a hatchet that's only slightly holy? The undead don't stand a chance, more or less. Holy half-priest. What is a half-priest? <laughs> 
is this someone you will ever meet? They're all just meant to point to this thing that could exist or could not exist. Maybe, maybe they're all from this world. Maybe they're all things that are connected to this world. I, it's something I would love to expand on, basically take a collection of all the lore that I've created and see if I can kind of hint at it a little more a little more interestingly there's coal and charcoal <laughs> because why not be annoying right from the start there's a jagged stone which sharpness three simple yet effective which maybe that's more powerful than half the starting uh, swords you can make i don't know i didn't do the math and the effect of the enchantments has changed over time this was a very clever way to promote my website or so I thought that website is not a website anymore <laughs> so it doesn't matter uh, just a compass and a clock because these seem like things adventurers should have and some basic food altogether basic stuff a uh, nice little starting area does look a lot better when it's darker before you go, did you see the tree? What tree? What are you talking about? Hopefully that would provoke the player to look around. Oh, there's a tree. I want to get to that tree. Hopefully that would provoke the player to kind of think about things. Danger ahead, bridge out. Oh, there's a bridge. Maybe I want to be over there. How would I get there? Oh, it seems like there's a path. Huh, the path goes there. There's an entrance there. Maybe from here I can get to there. Because wood. I need wood. This was my hope. <laughs> player's going to do what player's going to do. You come in. It should be very safe. Because there's lava everywhere. You see the rule board. VRAN's mini CTM. Please don't visit bwn.com. It doesn't exist, like I mentioned. The basic rules classic <laughs> i called it classic because i was redoing it and once i had finished redoing sandstone happy love um the third one float the classic series one two and three once i finished redoing all them for one eight one oh my gosh <laughs> so long ago now i was gonna move on to my other mini ctm maps which i never really did but I plan on it. <laughs> Find and complete the monument. Find wool and chest. No sheep or dies. Play uneasy or higher. Never peaceful. Stay within the boundaries of the map. Survive any way the game allows. No cheating. You craft the challenge and the metal blocks. Yes, in this one I decided... Well, I mean, I have ores. You might as well make the metal blocks too. Rule 7. Jump into every lava pit. Later on, I decide to not call that rule seven. You notice in the first version, I didn't call it an actual rule um, because I didn't want someone who's confused to think, oh, maybe that is a rule. In this version, the path is much more expanded. I guess I'll walk through instead of fly through so you can get a feel. Um, this, what? What's going on here? This, no, oh, you could fall down, except you could also walk down instead of falling down. And you come down here, and here's your first chest. All chests have a different type of text, decoration, a different type of block, and that's to indicate the rarity of the items inside. I've moved away from that because that's not as clear. And I actually have a a guide. Oh my gosh. I'll show you the guide. Uh, I have a, a guide I put together for this map. It's so beautiful. And it explains all these things. And it's just a pants chest. And so I decided, I think I decided, that all my maps should have a pants chest. This, I think, was after I worked on Pantheon 2. I'm not good with time, so... I get some stuff like that wrong. Uh, you're not going to know. 
and I apologize. <laughs> Uh, but I won't mention it anymore because it's a distraction. You come down here. I made it so you could get through with no tools because that's what the situation would likely be. A little safety area because it starts to get dark. But still fairly well lit. Not as long a path anymore. Um, I had completely remade. No, I had nearly completely remade most areas. Uh, tip. It's okay to run past an area. Tip, you may not yet be ready. There were too many people, as in the one or two that I noticed, who would come into this area and they just get stuck. They don't leave. And it's just, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good for them because you're not meant to sit here and fight yet. You're meant to understand. This is meant to teach you the first rule of CTM which is at the start, you don't have the equipment you need. And it's okay to not try to just jump in and do the first dungeon or whatever else is going on. Here we have that same assorted swords chest, which would have been inside the entrance before coming out into the petrified forest. I stick with just the bedrock and the obsidian instead of trying to do two different types of trees. They're taller. There's a lot more space to move around. Uh, the path, the main path is lit up. The branching paths are not. We'll look at that a little more shortly. And the Assorted Swords Sampler Pack. The cutesy thing here is it's meant to look like it's a sword with a wooden handle and two pieces of stone, two pieces of gold. And they all do something slightly different. Smite 2 vein of arthropods too, or you could use the wood one, which is going to have less damage, but the enchantments are a little better. This is a great example of giving too many options, because what do you want the player to do? Do you want the player to sit here at this chest and look at each one and try to figure out <laughs> which, which they should be using? It's just not it's not as interesting. It's not that fun a thing to do as a player. And you're kind of making it so you, the player doesn't really have a choice. There's a ladder here as a hint to go up. And here we have bedrock. And the reason we have bedrock is because I'm part of a group that's going to let me be able to sell my map on the marketplace. And I feel like... If I can make a little bit of money, even if it's just a tiny bit, that justifies the time that I can spend making experiences for other people to enjoy. I'd really like to be able to do that. I think it's fun for me. It's fun for you. Um, so let's first talk about some immediate changes. We have signs with <laughs> glow, and it kind of misbehaves a little bit. But for the most part, when you're up to it, it looks pretty nice. Um, there's some cobblestone. It's a variety of colors. I set the time to sunrise, which is what I expect the map will be starting with. Um, is that a tree? Wood is an essential material. I have in my mind thought about the voice of the tip sign, where, where it comes from, its purpose and hopefully made the messaging you get sound like it comes from a consistent, a, a single source, not a <laughs> ever-changing, what do I want to say at this moment type thing. We have our location markers. These are lodestones, which you could tie a compass to if you wanted for some reason. Momentary rest. I think I found something. There's a crate here now, so it's a different type of chest. And it has an expor exploration block fragment. This is no longer a retextured item. It is its own item, because you can sort of do that with bedrock. What you can do and can't do is increasing, improving. Um, 
so that's pretty great. I stuck to just features that would be considered not experimental because I didn't I don't know if that causes any issues with the game being loaded on certain things or not. Um, but I am looking forward to when many of these enhanced features, like actually making different kinds of picks and shovels, etc., completely custom armor, is not considered experimental. I'd love to take all the items with lore and even give them custom textured uh, maybe even custom models at some point, just to really help the experience. I am very proud of how this looks, of how it turned out. Uh, down here is essentially the same. These are the same exact blocks, the same exact placement of blocks as the previous version we just looked at. They're just converted to bedrock and... Then I went ham and retextured all of them. <laughs> here's, here's a good example of my smaller thinking. I called the map Sandstone. And because I called it Sandstone, I wanted to feature the block Sandstone. And I did. <laughs> and it's a desert. And there's only a couple blocks that show up in the desert. So I could use those blocks, and I shouldn't use any other blocks. And by this time around, my thinking is, why not? Why can't I use other blocks? I looked up some images for deserts, and I snipped a few of those colors, and then I made a few sort of in between. I ended up turning it into a palette, or a gradient rather, I looked up a lot of videos on Minecraft gradients and how to do it. I don't know. I don't know if I pulled it off. I, I think it looks very interesting. There is a sand block and a sandstone block, and they all are named. This is cream sandstone. This is cream sand. That's just the regular stuff. You go up a little higher. I think somewhere here. Yes, we got bleached sandstone bleached sand it's all retextured uh concrete and concrete powder i didn't know ducks could spawn there that's probably fine i'll have to look at that uh, i painted all the areas with specific biomes and i used the biome tags that are already part of vanilla minecraft's uh, spawning system in order to control what can spawn where. So it should be. It might not be because this is my test copy. Uh, yes. It should not be on peaceful. But even not being on peaceful, uh, nothing can spawn here. Oh, that's why the duck was there. The duck was there because I placed the duck. Yes. <laughs> I remember now. Uh, so we still have a tree over there. There's different sorts of lighting cues. I didn't light up the path, and I still need to decide if I, I want to, but the path is actually safe. Uh, day cycle will be on. There's the same lighting cue over here. And if we look at the items, they're essentially the same. I did link the compass to a location called the safety hut just because you can do that now it's the same green text items some of them i had to recreate even though they look exactly the same just because when they copied over actually that's not correct none of the items copied over i had to use an external tool to kind of trick this trick the items back into an inventory that I could then bring into the map. And also for some items, I think I was able to use the schematic block. I, I had to do a couple tricks, but I have all the items moved over. And I have an easy way to take them out and put them back into another world. If I want to kind of keep, keep it going. The chest have a different color glass block. 
If you don't know what color does what, it doesn't really matter, but I'm hoping that you'll open maybe one with a green glass block and you go, oh, this stuff was really good. <clears throat> and then you'll see another one with a green block and you're like, oh, I bet that's something good. I'm just hoping to give that kind of clue. I also brought in some item textures from some of the other maps that I've made. And I kind of want to just continue to do that as I have additional projects and tweak things to make them more interesting, unique, just because they're different than vanilla. Then kind of keep those rolling. <laughs> so if you continue to play my maps, then you'll just start to become familiar with items that are uniquely mine. I think that'd be pretty cool. So here's the starting area redone. I'm a tip sign. I can help guide you if you let me. Here's a directional location. Petri Force is this way. And here we have the updated rule board, and it's nearly almost the same. VRANS Mini CTM, Bedrock Edition. I think that sounds really cool. You're, of course, going to find and complete the monument, but now you're going to find monument blocks and chests and dungeons. It's no longer wool, because why make it wool? It doesn't need to be. Play an easier, higher, never peaceful. Stay within the boundaries of the map. Survive any way the game allows. You craft the exploration monument block. And here is the introduction of the orange tip sign. It is slightly different. I don't expect you to have that memorized, but it is minus plus in the parentheses that's a little funny. I'm sure it has a specific name. Whereas this is just the minus equals square bracket. It's in all caps. You should jump in lava for secrets. <laughs> it's unhelpful advice. It is consistent with the other orange signs. It's it's some other it's the voice of something that does not want you to succeed and the yellow tip sign is the voice of something that needs you to succeed. We have this area which I'm pretty sure yeah, this is this would be the same. Sometimes exploration is rewarded. Desert leggings. Originally, I was going to have sand on top of these, which you would have to break in order to open the chest. That's something Vex does in his maps, and I think it's to kind of force you to slow down um, to either give you the interesting choice of you could try to go get it now while you're still surrounded by danger, but you're going to get slowed down and you're going to have to try to be fast, or you can make the choice of securing the area first. But it kind of forces an interesting decision that could lead to consequences that will be your fault. Uh, this is a little less precarious than before. Because the point of this area is not to die. And then we have the entrance to the Petrified Forest. The forest up ahead is dangerous. It's okay to skip an area and come back prepared. Location name, Petrified Forest. Assorted Sword Sampler Pack. Simplified and given a shield. Although, <laughs> skeletons cannot spawn here. I'm trying to remember Shattered Survival. Shattered Survival is a map I made where... I was messing with biome settings, and this was for Java. I guess technically it still is. You could go get it and play it. Um, and I wanted the trees to look sickly or transformed or something wrong with them. So <laughs> that's where these are from, except here, if you break these, they will not... They will not drop anything, nor will the leaves. And these are custom blocks. But the state of custom blocks in Bedrock means 
there's no tool that's better to break them. They will just take the time they take. Oh. We don't need to explore this yet, because we haven't explored it in the other versions yet. Here is the guide that I told you about. And can I just say, my recording software is so fantastic. I can record super old Java, super new Java, <laughs> bedrock, and a PDF file in an internet browser. Uh, I know, it's not impressive, I suppose. I'm not bragging or anything, obviously. but. I just, I like to appreciate the advances we have in some of this technology. It's so easy to ignore. <laughs> I took graphics from Minecraft and completely just cut, copy, cut, cut, paste. Here's the book sideways, extended. These are using the Minecraft font and the... The tag that kind of appears. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. And it's just it's just nice. What 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 zoom am I at? Here we go. So it's the B Rands Mini CTM series game guide. And it has the rules laid out and the starting tips. If you've never played a CTM before. Here's a picture of the monument. <laughs> the final goal is to complete the monument. Before that, though, you have to find and secure the monument. And you got to get all the blocks. Here's a fleecy box. Here's the monuments, the wool blocks. Here's the tag that's on the... I called it a nameplate. Maybe that's the official name. Maybe I looked it up on the wiki at the time. That's the type of thing I would do. I used, I used these because I could prevent you from being able to make them by limiting just one item, which would be blue dye. And eventually, later on, you could probably get directly to purple. Um, and then lapis was required, which I ended up including in the revision, the second revision, because otherwise you couldn't enchant. <laughs> Lots of changes over time. Play uneasy, stay within the boundaries. An introduction that there are other enemies that might have enchanted items emphasizing it's Minecraft. Do Minecraft things. Build the challenge block <laughs> back before I retextured it. It's strange because this guide was included in the revision where I did change the texture. Uh, so Somewhere there's kind of two updates that are really close to each other where I fixed a bunch of things. I put in all the tip signs because players were getting stuck. I maybe added a few more items. I felt a need to emphasize it's not an adventure map. It's a CTM. You can, you can break blocks. You can craft blocks. You can do whatever you want. There's spawners. Probably more information than you would need <laughs> about the spawners. Just place just place the the torches. I don't even know how I got such a good looking snapshot of the, the guy. I must have I don't know. Did I really sit there and clean pixel by pixel? See, I'll do things and I, I don't remember how I do things. <laughs> It's it's pretty funny. Limited resource. Says resources. A staple for me, for the CTM. You don't just have instant access to everything. You got to slowly advance through the progression, which is, for me, really fun. Loot chests. <laughs> See, I tried to have different styles and different types and different 
hints of what was what, just to maybe get you excited before you opened it. But I don't know that that really worked out. It's not... It's not a big distinction. I threw in some information about enchantments, just to emphasize, yes, you can enchant things. Same for brewing potions, with a couple hints of, hey, here's yeah, how you can make the different potions. A hint, tip, and clue about the tip sign. Place throughout the map are my tip signs. Oh, I said my, and it's not even there. <laughs> Managing hunger. Oh, that's something I didn't show you. That's an enhancement on Bedrock. Now, this could be an enhancement on Java. I just never thought to do it at the time. And I've since seen other people have this in their maps or as a resource uh, pack that you can just add onto everything where it gives... Uh, numbers of food. I didn't want to overcomplicate it so I don't show saturation. But specifically for my custom foods, you can't really get excited about it or not excited about it if you don't know how good it is in relation to the other things. You know if you get a golden carrot, that's way better than a potato. You might not know how much better, but but you know what it is. If you get a spider candy, is that great? Well, it's 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 okay. It's two haunches instead of just instead of three, instead of one and a half, instead of one. If you get a beetroot, which you do, they're only worth 0. 0.5. Well, okay. I now you understand that it's not a great food, and so you can make an interesting choice. If I give you yummy jerky chunks and yummy jerky bits. Now that you know it's 2.5 and 1.5, you can make a little more of an interesting decision. Same with the cookies. The cookies have a food value too. Well, that's probably like an hour of <laughs> recording raw files that I'll need to edit down. Uh, so that's probably a good stopping point. I thought I would zoom through all three maps just real quick and... Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> all right, well... That's okay. If you're enjoying your time, I'm enjoying my time. We're just we're just having a good time. This has been B Ran. I'll see you next video. Have a great day. As I stare at you with my cold, dead eyes. <laughs>